On today's video, we're going to talk about what to look through on a system walkthrough. So this is a question we've gotten a few times, you know, what do you, uh, when you walk through your greenhouse, what are you looking for? Are you looking for nutrient deficiencies, wilting plants, what is it um, that you're keeping your eyes open for um, on a daily basis? I'll start off by saying any farmer, any greenhouse grower, anyone who is uh, growing crops and making money off of them, crops are their livelihood, uh, needs to develop an eye for their plants. So they need to begin thinking about nutrient deficiencies and thinking about wilting and thinking about all of the different um, things that can impact plant growth. Um, a day slowed down, a day wilting, um, impacts your overall productivity. So. For any greenhouse producer or farmer or uh, whatever you're doing, uh, it's important to keep your plants really healthy and growing really quickly, growing vibrantly, and uh, make sure that you're getting the most out of your system. So I'm going to walk through real fast. First I'm going to talk about wilting. When I walk uh, through my greenhouse, I always keep my eyes open. I'm looking for wilting. Now typically, uh, if we do have wilting plants, it's due more to um, something clogging up, a nozzle getting clogged. Um, or on really, really hot days when it's just really hard to keep up with cooling, sometimes we'll see some wilting. But by and large, what we're looking for is clogged nozzles. So we'll go around and uh, we can visually check nozzles to make sure they're running. Um, in the morning, oftentimes, you know, some nozzles will, will just be dribbling. But um, we go through it, we just visually check the nozzles. And uh, then we, of course, always look for wilting. Now it's not always crystal clear. The plants won't always be just kind of crumpled over. A lot of the time you're just looking for leaves that are a little bit more relaxed than they should be. So um, it's really almost an eye that you just kind of develop over time. But uh, keep your eyes open and you'll soon learn how to identify a plant that's just a little bit more relaxed than it ought to be. So uh, I'll, get, I'll show you an example here of a tower that wilted up a little bit yesterday. So here's a tower that wilted up a little bit yesterday and this, this is a pretty extreme example. Um, from what we usually see. But uh, you can see here that the leaves are flopped over a little bit. They're just kind of sad looking. And um, it went without water for probably a good portion of the day yesterday because folks were working on other things. But you know, that's an example um, of a wilted tower right there. So we keep our eyes open and uh, we're doing checks several times a day. So a couple times in the morning, a couple times in the afternoon, a couple times in the evening. And that's standard for any commercial greenhouse. You're always walking through and keeping your eyes open for this thing. So this little guy got missed yesterday because everyone was busy. It will bounce back just fine. It's not too far gone. Um, these leaves will perk up here uh, pretty quickly. So another thing that we're uh, always checking out, uh, keeping our eyes on, is nutrient deficiency. So in aquaponic systems, iron tends to be a little deficient. And there are a few plants that show iron deficiency sooner than everything else in my experience and collards are one of them so collards are kind of one of our telltale plants they tell us when our iron dosing is behind schedule or when something's happening to the iron in our system that means we need to up how much we're dosing so um, there you can see a little bit of iron deficiency in these plants um, it's just kind of uh, that chlorosis there so this is also another thing that we keep our eyes on um, we just look for that chlorosis that comes from iron deficiency. There's a few other deficiencies too, uh, potassium, occasionally calcium or magnesium depending on, on uh, the water quality and the other conditions in the system. But those ones are uh, not as common, um, mostly for those we keep our eyes out for magnesium deficiency um, and or cupping leaves. A lot of time, remember that if you notice a deficiency like this, you're already a week or two behind. Um, so it's important to keep up on your dosing. So another thing we keep our eyes on as we walk through the greenhouse is we're just looking for leaks. And a lot of the time we can look at our sump tank, we can look at our, um, we've got basically a dipstick in our sump tank, that, a floating dipstick that tells us how much water we have in our sump. And that's what we gauge our overall water level off of. So if we're seeing that dropping more consistently or more quickly than usual, uh, we know that we have um, a leak somewhere in our system. So that always, uh, triggers us going through and checking for drips, checking for leaks, something like that. Um, a lot of the time it's, it's uh, what we have here in this system. So we've got overly mature towers um, that have started to lean forward because the weight of the produce leans them forward. So they need to be moved to the front hole um, on the tower to compensate for that. But um, these haven't yet and you can see here that we've got just some drips here. Um, off of the foliage because that water is running forward and dripping onto the ground. 
So uh, we'll move these to the front hole and it'll fix that leak. But it's something that we check for daily as well and just make sure that we're not losing water um, anywhere in our system. Because the more water conservative we can be, the more nutrient conservative we are and uh, the less water we end up using. So in this greenhouse, we usually use about 60 gallons a day. Um, so if we're using more than that, then we know we've got a problem somewhere. So that's, that's another thing we keep an eye on. We also look for uh, leaking the bottoms of our gutters where our caps are. We check those to make sure those are not leaking from time to time and where they enter our drain pipe down there. Uh, the goal here is just to minimize all of our drips, all of our leaks. Remember that a tiny little drip in 10 different places can add up pretty quick. So another thing we always check on is uh, insects. So as we're walking our rows, we're always kind of turning over the leaves, um, looking for different insect pests. Uh, primarily in this greenhouse aphids, and here you can see on the on the bottom of this uh, leaf here, we've got uh, some aphids growing. So we've got about, let's see, maybe seven or eight on the other side of this leaf. And uh, that basically just tells us where we're at with our spring, how effective we're being. So occasionally uh, we'll go through and we'll find towers that show particularly bad infestations, um, like this one. Yeah, I guess this isn't too bad. But uh, we'll go through and we'll find a tower like this and we'll go through and spray and we'll do kind of, uh, we'll count how many there are beforehand and we'll count how many there are afterwards. And uh, we'll try and kind of gauge our efficacy from that. But we do have a uh, set uh, spraying schedule where we go through with a bunch of different OMRI products that we use in, in here to kill the pests. And um, we just go through and we check on them and make sure they're not getting too far out of control because once they're, they're going once they've got some momentum behind them. Pests like aphids or whiteflies or thrips or any of, any of those uh, common greenhouse pests, they can get going and once they're going, they're, they're gone. Um, so you just have to be really careful that they don't get ahead of you um, from a spraying perspective, especially in aquaponic systems because you are more limited with the uh, controls that you can use. So it's always important to keep your eyes open. Look for uh, the signs of pests. Look for pests themselves and uh, always be prepared um, with some kind of control to deal with them. So one of the final things we'll check for when we walk through our greenhouse is just to make sure that all of our mechanical components are doing what they're supposed to be doing. You want to uh, check your fans, make sure that they're uh, on your thermostat. If they're on your thermostat, that they're, your thermostat is set correctly, that they're operating, they're kicking on when they need to be kicking on. Um, similarly, make sure your, you know, your thermostats are in good shape, they're operating, make sure that your blowers and your heat exchangers, whatever you're using to heat your greenhouse, are turning on and turning off when they're supposed to be. Um, check your pumps, make sure it's running, usually that's a pretty simple one. Um, and just make sure that everything mechanical in your greenhouse is operating the way it should. Um, most of the time you'll know pretty quickly if something is wrong, but it's still worth going through and checking on. All right, so we've kind of gone through now the different things that we're looking for when you go through the greenhouse, whether it's wilting, um, some kind of nutrient deficiency, bugs, leaks, uh, mechanical problems. Um, this kind of covers all of the bases for what you need to see on a daily basis in your greenhouse, what you need to be checking on to make sure that your system is running and operating correctly. So uh, I would recommend if you're just getting into aquaponics, if you don't have a whole lot of experience, or if you're just even working with a new facility, to build a checklist of all the different things that you need to be checking on daily, whether it's water chemistry or uh, you know the different things you're looking for in your plants. Build that checklist and go through it on a daily basis. There's gonna be some things you need to do three or four or five times a day. There's gonna be other things that you can do once a week or once a month or uh, even once a quarter, something like that. But it's much more helpful organizationally to just build that checklist and uh, be really diligent about doing, going through that checklist on a daily basis when you're first getting started. Now once you have a lot of experience with the system, it will become second nature and it'll be no problem for you to just go through and, and do it off the top of your head. But at least to start, I recommend a checklist and uh, hopefully this is helpful to you. Let us know if you guys have any more questions about what we do kind of on a daily basis in our greenhouse to make sure that things are running properly. All right, well welcome to our video uh, tour of our greenhouse.